Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video and for this one uh, we're still uh, with the Jeff Minter games. So this is Mama Llama which was uh, released for Commodore 64 in 1985 obviously on the uh, Llama Soft label. Now being a bit of a Jeff Minter fan um, I am well aware that his games do rather divide opinion uh, quite considerably. Uh, a lot of his games, you either love it or you hate it. I mean, even though I'm a fan, I can't say I like all of his games. I, there, are, there are a few I just can't get into at all. But I don't think any of his games divided opinion quite as much as this one. Um, and Jeff Minter did like to sort of experiment a bit and uh, come up with uh, you know a, a, a new take on an old formula he did like his shoot em ups in fact, I think just about every game he did was a shoot em up uh, but he also liked to bring in something different and that's where this comes in this is very different um, now what I'm going to do is pause the emulator here so that we can go through uh, these options here without having the music blaring away in the background because although it's uh, been turned down a bit uh, for the video it hasn't been turned down for me so I've got it like blaring in my ears all the time so yeah we'll pause it for the moment so um, you see on the title page here uh, all of these uh, options so underneath where it says devised by Yak the Hairy uh, we have uh, warp time shields generate regen aborts no goes and next to it we have a picture of Rory the psychotic uh, guinea pig uh, actually what I will do is just unpause the emulator and we'll select the one that I will play as which is bar this is the easiest uh, setting apparently so um, warp time is uh, that is I, I think it's the time you have um, to leave the level um, when you know, the, the warp gate appears once you've completed the level and you can then get out of the level Shields is self-explanatory. It's uh, the strength of the shields of uh, the Mama Llama and uh, the two uh, baby llamas. Uh, gen rate is okay. The rate at which the uh, enemies will uh, generate uh, an increase in uh, number and strength on the actual grid area, which we'll come to obviously when we start the game. Regen, obviously regeneration. Um, if you leave a level without completing it, either because you quit the level or you uh, lose a life, um, you can go back to that level, and there will be, you know, the same number of uh, enemies that were left when you either lose a life or quit the level. But uh, the regen rate means they will grow in size until they get back to full strength or even beyond full strength. So yes, that regen rate uh, is pretty high. That's how quickly it will get back up to uh, that full strength. Abort, um, that is if you are not doing too well in a level and you want to quit it. Uh, you use one of your aborts. So with this setting I can abort 9 levels. I never do, I always try to get through uh, each one that I'm on. And then the no-goes, um, that's easy, well, it's more easily explained when we're on the uh, the grid screen, which we're about to go to now, so let's uh, unpause the emulator and uh, let's press fire to get a game underway. So here we are, now I'll pause it again. So, uh, yes, this is the uh, the grid, 10 by 10, so there are uh, 100 levels. Now, you look at the two uh, pointers, uh, one running along the side and one along the bottom. 
Um, the position that uh, they're in means you, know, you can rearrange each level around. If I just get it started again, uh, we'll move it. Well, we'll move them down to the bottom corner here because that flashing square that is the level you're actually going to play. And then if you hold down fire button and move them around, you can move you know, levels up and down. And then you move the column or the row depending on which one you have selected. So it's fairly self-explanatory in, in that regard. But yes, the one in the uh, bottom right hand corner there with the flashing square around it, that is always the level that you will be playing. Uh, now to the right of the grid you have this bar and that bar indicates uh, the uh, basically the difficulty level of uh, the level you're going into so if it's a square that is dark blue uh, there are very few enemies within it and then on the other extreme you go right the way down uh, past the red to the grey those levels are going to be very tough indeed next to those um, so you see these green and orange uh, uh, squares here so I have eight of the greens those are retro genesis devices uh, now you can place them on a square and they, now I always get these mixed up, they either slow down the rate at which uh, the square strength will increase, uh, so the level essentially gets more difficult um, the longer you wait to actually go in and uh, try to get through the level. And then the orange or orangey brown ones underneath, which I have four of, they are anti-genesis devices. They will stop completely the uh, the level from getting any more difficult. So uh, what you would do is you get the square that uh, you want. Uh, you know you select it through uh, moving the pointers and you would then plant or plant a uh, retro genesis except it's always it's always the one that's in the corner and then once you finish with it you pick it up and you uh, you know don't uh, yeah you, you haven't wasted it anyway let's get uh, a level underway so this one is uh, a blue so pretty easy in we go now wait for it to uh, appear and we'll pause it again so I can go through uh, the uh, status panel at the bottom so uh, the one two three four that you see that's uh, the four enemy waves and the arrow is pointing you in the direction that they're in so um, I think the, the lighter the color or is it, is it the, the stronger the color uh, the closer you are to them so it gives you it's basically like uh, not too unlike the um, the way it was working in uh, sheep in space which I did in the last video uh, underneath that is the name of the level so it's these beasties underneath that um, you'll see uh, either side you have X1 with 4 and Y1 with 3 now they are the inertia settings on the uh, kill droid, that uh, sort of circular thing that's hovering in the air above uh, the Marmalama, that's the kill droid, that is what you use to uh, destroy uh, the enemies in each of the levels. Uh, between the, uh, the two, you know, the X and Y, uh, you can actually change by the way the uh, X and Y settings, so you can change the inertia on the uh, kill droid it's not easy to control no matter what inertia settings you, you set it the lowest you can have is two and the highest you can have is nine uh, but yeah it's pretty tricky to uh, uh, maneuver at the best of times that's, that's the real skill in the game is being able to get you know take control of that thing um, so yeah between those are the one two three they are the uh, shields of uh, the Marmalama is number one and then the two babies uh, two and three uh, below that is uh, the name of the level 
and then you see G with lunar standard. G stands for gravity. Uh, the the gravitational effect on the moon affects um, your jumping. I don't jump very much in this game actually, so it's it's there, and it does vary between the level types, but it's it's not going to affect you too much there. I think it also affects the uh, handling and the inertia on the kill droid. So in that regard, it is more uh, more important. Bottom row, obviously, score. Then you have CF. That is completion factor. Um, I remember there was a, a Zap uh, 64 uh, article where they were you know, seeing who was the best gamer. And um, Jeff Minter was there and he chose this game. And it was going by a CF score rather than actual score. So... I get the impression, certainly from Jeff Minter's point of view, that the CF score is the more important. Uh, next to that is the aborts, so that's how many times you can quit the level if you, you know, you, you're getting absolutely mullered. And then next to that, uh, zap. This is probably the most important. Um, it's saying four. That's how many enemies you have to destroy to complete the level. Once you've done that, you can then warp out the level and return to the warp uh, to the uh, the grid uh, screen. So let's uh, resume. So to take control of the uh, kill droid, you have to hold down the fire button, and then you can move it around. Up and down has no effect on the uh, Marma Lama while you're controlling the uh, kill droid, or trying to control it in my case. But uh, left and right, obviously, your Marma Lama will also move left and right. I've only got one more to get. I have to destroy the flashy ones. There we go, right, so they all turned into those red sort of uh, spherical things, which tells you that uh, the level is done. You'll also see next to the one, two, three, fours. There's an arrow now pointing left. That is where the warp gate is. So let's uh, head there. Uh, if you take hits uh, and you're not controlling the um, kill droid, if you pull down, uh, that's downtime. Uh, they will all sit there, and you'll uh, recover uh, your shields. That black thing that's moving up and down there, that is the warp gate. Touch that, and we get off that level. So that level is now done. Right, balls again. Um, so now you can see that uh, the level I've just completed there on the grid now has a no entry sign in it. And uh, this is where the no-goes uh, come into account. Because apart from right now when you've just finished the level, if you move a no-go square in, uh, yeah, into this, you know, the level selector here, the highlighted square in the bottom corner, that will use up one of your no-goes. You can't put uh, a no-go square into there, otherwise, yeah, a no-go is used. Once you've used up all of your no-goes, it's game over anyway. So, let's, uh, so let me illustrate that. So, one got in, two got in, three, four, and you can see, I'm pointing on the screen, at the top, or on that column on the uh, left-hand, uh, right-hand side, all these no entries uh, signs are appearing in there. So we'll move it up again, it appears again, and then the next one, yeah. So game over, I used up all of my uh, no goes. So, um, yeah, you want to avoid uh, using, uh, you know, or having no go uh, squares appearing in that bottom corner. So let's start another game. So uh, what I will do is bring this easy one in and off we go. Alright. I think this one is relatively easy. The, uh, the enemies don't take off much shields if they hit your uh, llamas or even the baby ones. So uh, I've got to... Right, there we go, that's uh, that level done, let's bugger off to uh, the uh, warp uh, gate, and I jump straight over it, there we go, 
so that level done. Now I can't see uh, too many other uh, so let's uh, bring this one down I made a bit of a balls up there I've got two of my no-goes used. But anyway let's bring this one in and see how we do here life in balance I think that is yes it's a yin, yin yang uh, reference so only five enemies to destroy but it's not always obvious which enemies you have to do, uh, actually take out nor is it so uh, always obvious um, how to take them out uh, so I think with this one yeah I have to destroy uh, a, a small yin yang uh, symbol while it is uh, in contact with that large one anyway that level's done so off we go I forgot to uh, sort out my uh, uh, energy there. Alright, well this looks like one of the easier levels. Off we go. Eye of Horus, okay. This is a relatively easy one but yeah, they keep hanging around the uh, llama and when they do it is really hard to get away from them. Get out of it! And yeah, that's the llama llama destroyed so Game over! I mean, you do technically get three lives, um, but your other two lives are the two baby llamas. So if you lose them, you can carry on, but if the mama llama is uh, killed, yeah, that is game over. So even though I'm sitting here, you know, uh, and, and explaining the game, uh, I'm still not doing a very good job of uh, actually playing it. The game is seriously difficult. Right, so all things mutate. Not familiar with this, fucking hell. Well, there's only one uh, more thing to actually kill. There we go, so that was not uh, a difficult level at all. See, what I'll do, yeah, we'll just uh, get the downtime, get the shields back up the full before we bugger off. There we go. Right, so. Uh, Get that one out of the way. Move this across. And right, let's do this level. Uh, levitation, I can do that, yeah, okay. Uh, so it looks like it is just taking out all these, uh, I don't know if they're meant to be uh, green and common protesters or whatever. See, no, it's not as simple as that. Looks like I've got to hit him in a particular place. And you need to take out two more. Oh, the inertia on this kill joint is, makes it so tricky to control. So I think I have to wait for it to be flashing, there we go, and then I finally hit one. Well let's get our uh, shields back up. And there's the uh, walk gate, oh here we go. Ah, right, uh, no, oh shit, just used uh, another, uh, another two. Right. Uh, this is a light blue one, here we go. Zap stars, can't see what that uh, last bit is going in the wrong way. Okay, so there's 11 more of these to take out. Nine, so this one looks relatively straightforward as far as I can just hit the star things and uh, that will count as uh, taking out an enemy two left to do now. One. Uh, well I thought that was it. There we go, now it is. Alright, the old downtime. Get the uh, shields back up. And uh, there we go, through the uh, gate. Back to the selection. Alright, let's uh, yeah, get that square out of the way. Right, so try this one. 
Oh, it's the Eye of Horus again, which I really fucked up last time. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't hang about with uh, taking them out. There's ten of them to do. Uh, right, seven. But they, they, they hanging around, yeah, like mad. Oh, there's only one more to get, but my llama is... Jesus Christ! <laughs> I was fucking close! <laughs> well, by some miracle, I managed to get through it. Uh, there we are. So, uh... Shields are now back up the maximum. Thank fuck. And away we go. Fuck me, that was tough. Now, you can see that uh, the uh, squares are starting to show that they are getting more difficult. Right, so, well, this is one of the easier ones. In we go. Rory saves me. Oh, this is a really tough one. Uh, Rory is that psychotic uh, guinea pig. Yeah, he's, he's this way, and yeah, they really do fucking pile into you. But I don't think it is as simple as just hitting the... Uh, right, so I lost a... Uh, I lost a baby there. Uh, I'm not going to try that level again, actually, because that level is just far too hard. Let's try this one. See you on the dark side. Right, so obviously plenty of sheep are going to be appearing here. But again, um, it's not just a case of hitting them with the uh, the kill droids. It's not counting as, uh, it's not reducing the zap. It looks like I've got to hit the black sheep. But I've got to hit it, yeah, I can't hit it directly, I don't think. I have to maybe hit it with uh, the, uh, oh, the next baby one's gone. I'm going to carry on with that one. I'm going to try and figure out how I'm meant to do it. I think I have to use it by hitting the uh, the white sheep. And then, yeah, their explosions damage the black one. <sighs> My shields are in a dreadful state. Uh, right. If I stay down, I can uh, try and regenerate the shields. Can't use the uh, uh, kill droid while I'm sitting down here. So, right, there we go. Now, this won't improve my completion factor much because I've not uh, got any of the baby llamas, so I think it will only go up by one if I manage to get through this level. There we go. Right, job done. So you don't get the, the baby llamas back. Uh, once they're gone, they are gone. So, uh... There we go. And now look at the state of the grid. Um, so what I think I'll do, I'll put a... One there. Actually, I really wanted to put a retro Genesis one down. So let's. Uh... Does that mean this is as straightforward as just hitting everything that comes on the screen? Or have I got to figure this one out as well? Uh, Zap is still at 27. Still at 27 after hitting something, so yeah, I've got to go after a specific target. Try and uh, regain my shield. See, the, the kill draw is not doing anything. I don't even have control of it. 
Mind you, even when I do have control of it, it doesn't look like I have. <laughs> Now, if, like me, you find this music <laughs> really fucking annoying, um, you can actually uh, turn it off, supposedly. But I'm pressing the key that I was told did it, and it's not doing anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so much for that. Uh, okay, now I've still got to take out 20 on it. Oh, it looks like uh, I can't get any more downtime, so this is it, it's do or die. Actually, you know what, I'm thinking I might have bought this. Yeah, so we'll abort the level. So we can now go to the, uh, the warp gate, but the level's not done. Jesus Christ, look at the state of that. Uh, well, I don't really have much chance anywhere, but I guess I'll go back to this one. Try and get some uh, shields back. But it is a, a hopeless task. Right down to 14, but it's not it's 13, but oh, my shields are in a bad way. I don't know how much downtime I'm going to be able to, to do here. Right, down to 11. It's these black things that are floating around that I have to hit. But I have to hit it with the kill droid, not with my fucking llama. Down to eight, seven. Let's get some more downtime. Oh, that's it. Right, I can't do it anymore. Uh, right, six left. Shields are not good. I might have bought it again and then come back to it. Yeah. That way I can at least get some downtime again and try and replenish my shields at the start of the level. There we go. So it's now showing as an easy. Right, well, let's see what we go. You notice now there are a lot more no entry uh, squares because those screens or those levels are now deemed to have become too hard, so I can't go into them. Yeah. If it means you can't select uh, a level because you use up too many uh, of your uh, you know, uh, no goes, then yep, you're stuck and it is game over. So, right, down to four, three, two. One, just one more to get. There it, oh, I thought I had it. There it is. So, we've actually been able to do that level. I dread to think what the grid looks like now. Uh, yeah. Um, right, well, I can... I'll use a few of me no goes, but here we are. Let's see what this one's all about. Because they are so hairy. Right. Uh, only four. So this. Ah, oh, fuck it. They take so much energy. I only needed to take only one more out, and I'd have done the level. But oh. So I managed to get completion factor of 14. Okay, well let's get to the review underway then. Um, graphically, okay, even by Jeff Minter standards, it is a bit on the uh, gaudy side, shall we say. Uh, huge numbers of uh, expanded sprites and uh, yeah, the, the colours 
well, <laughs> the colours can make your eyes bleed. Um, as far as uh, audio goes, the music drives you around the fucking bend. Uh, the sound effects, such as they are, are not too bad. Oh, fucking hell, I picked this cuntish one again. Alright. Yeah. I'm gonna lose a uh, fucking younger in a minute. Yeah, there we go. What a balls up that was. Um, yeah, so audio not great. And gameplay, well, even Jeff Minter himself uh, now admits this was perhaps a bit over ambitious. Um, There are people I know who have had this game from the day it was released, so like some 35 years. And even though they've got the instructions and they've read the instructions cover to cover, fuck knows how many times, they still haven't got a fucking clue what it is they're doing. And it's really not that difficult to see why. I mean, it is pretty convoluted. Um, I don't think it's a bad game, but it's it's definitely not one of Minter's best. Like I say, uh, even Jeff Minter himself has admitted um, he went a bit over the, overboard with it. Uh, it's, uh, it, it certainly has its moments, but uh, it can be pretty annoying because there's a lot of the time you are just left wondering what the fuck am I doing in there? <coughs> I'll say, I know people who have had the game, you know, 35 years, they've got access to the instructions, they've read the instructions, still don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's, I mean, it's probably the most pretentious game that uh, uh, Jeff Minter did, and you know when Minter, you know even Minter himself saying it was over ambitious and perhaps a bit overdone, you know it it doesn't look too good. Um, well, I, so I don't think the game's terrible, not by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's because, you know, I actually know what I'm doing in it, even if it may not look it when you see me playing. Uh, believe it or not, that, that's how it looks, even if you're watching somebody who is good at this game. Um, so, yeah, yeah, even someone who is, you know, pretty skilled at playing this, if you're watching it, it still looks like they don't really know what the fuck they, you know, they're actually doing in the thing. So yeah, it's it's not even remotely straightforward. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's awful. But I suspect that uh, a lot of people who got initially put off with it back in the day because it was just so complicated and it had you wondering, you know, what the fuck am I doing in this? Um, even if they know how to actually play it now, they've probably already reached a point where they just think, no, this is not for me. Um, and like I said at the start, I, mean, I know Jeff Minter games really divide opinion at the best of times, but none of them divide opinion like this thing. Um, so I will score it six and a half out of ten. Um, it is definitely one of those games where if you're watching someone playing it, even when they are, as I've been trying to do, explaining how to play the thing, and you're still thinking, yeah, this really does not look like the game for me. Um, yeah, playing it is not going to change your mind. Not at all. Uh, but if it sort of caught your interest and got you thinking, well, yeah, it might actually be worth a, a look, then yeah, I would certainly recommend you go ahead and give it a try. Um, but uh, yeah, it is fucking difficult. I'd say this is the most difficult game 
uh, Jeff Mint ever, ever actually uh, developed. So there we go, uh, Marmal Armour for Commodore 64, uh, six and a half out of ten. I don't think it's as dismal as uh, it's reputed to be, but it's definitely not uh, Minter's finest. Uh, that brings this review to an end, and we'll see you at the next one.